Hi everyone, welcome. As you can see, I'm already prepared with some yummy foods to give to one of my worm bins. It might look like a lot, but if you think about it, this pepper is basically hollow. There's not a lot of coffee in here. So, strawberries, some beans, there's even a rotting lime in here for them. Oops. So, I mean, it's not a lot of food, but it's only been 10 days since the bin was last fed. Besides the food, I've also got a collection of really interesting colored napkins here and a paper towel <laughs> snuck in there a white boring paper towel so I've been uh, meaning to start shredding that stuff along with the newspaper cardboard and other paper materials when we're making my prepared bedding but today we're gonna just use some of those napkins whole as they are as the bedding to go with the feeding that these little guys right here are gonna get these little guys have been I don't know, two, three, four. I think 234 days is the age of the bin. And the last feeding was number 18. This will be feeding number 19. And only 10 days have passed since we last fed them. And from what I remember, just from breezing through the video last time, there was a whole bunch of yummy stuff in there. Maybe after only 10 days, we'll get a chance to see some worms still working that stuff down. And even if there's leftovers, we're just gonna give them what we bought down for them. So I'm gonna get that system up on the bench. And we're gonna get them fed. Most of my systems have, yeah, most of my systems do have plastic coverings nowadays with the furnace starting to run. I'm starting to sense that the air in the house is a little bit drier, which has a tendency to draw the moisture out of the systems. I guess in the more humid days of summer, the saturation of moisture in the air sort of prevents that from happening, but it might be possible here too to begin guarding against excess drying due to evaporation although a system that's this far along is for the most part castings at this point I guess depending on how generous we've been with the bedding and you know when you cover up with paper only it is fair to expect that the top surface of your bin is going to be somewhat dry so you sort of I guess you trade moisture on the top surface and activity on the top surface for the added airflow that you get with the more porous paper versus using the uh huh, versus using the plastic which keeps everything in but also limits the amount of moisture that can make its way down into the system these look like they're cherry pits and a lot of times i'll just pull stuff like this out Expecting that it's going to go nowhere fast, but I thought I saw somebody the other day. Might have been on the Learn by Doing channel where we saw one of these actually get cracked by pressing on it. So I'm debating, do we keep it in here? I guess at some point if we decide to harvest these castings and maybe run them through a sieve or a screen, we'll have a chance to intercept those objects so they don't end up in the collection of nice castings here. I'm not really in that much of a hurry to drive any of my systems to completion. So I'm content to keep going, especially in a system like this where it feels like I've only maybe reached half capacity. I feel like I've got plenty of room to continue. So even though we're kind of at that point where in a lot of times, and in the past at least, I would you know, tell myself, hey, you know, it's already so old or it's already received so many feedings and kind of using the patterns of past experiences as you know the measure of how much or how long or whatever a bin should run it's a very uh it's a very subjective thing and I don't want to feel like I'm being pressured especially by myself <laughs> into uh driving a system to completion if there's still a chance for it to keep going we're approaching winter now we just started autumn a couple weeks ago and I'm not one of those people who runs like a winter garden. I tried it in the past. So I tried stuff like, I think it was Brussels sprouts or whatever. Some of those crops that do quite nicely in the winter, even through the snow and everything. But I wasn't really planning on doing that this year. I guess if I were, I would still feel like I've got plenty of castings on reserve to use for that sort of planting endeavor. But it wasn't really in the cards for me this year. I wasn't planning to at least. Who knows? Things could change. 
I guess one thing I'm not seeing in here is any leftovers. <laughs> it did seem to me like some of the foods they were given last time were the sort of things that you wouldn't expect to see leftovers of. I mean, yeah, I'm seeing bits and pieces of stuff. Some sort of vegetable matter. I was tearing at it earlier. I don't really recall what the feeding consisted of last time. But it does seem like they've still got bits and pieces of it remaining here. But certainly not much, that's for sure. So, I don't feel bad about jamming another feeding in here. And it doesn't feel like jamming at all. It just feels like a good interval to come in and check on how they're doing. Somehow my sense when I look at this is that there's a lot, a lot of little tiny worms in here. I mean, I know these are red wigglers. They're not one of the larger size worms. They're not like a night crawler. But there's a lot of them in here. Lots and lots of worms. Look at them all. And it's so nice that the material that they're inhabiting is so nice and crumbly and easy to dive down into. If they don't like the bright lights, they can, they can just dive down. All right. It's times like this I start to feel like I don't have all that much capacity <laughs> remaining. So I'm already up here at the, the rim of the container. And we're going to try to get this feeding started now. Before I push my luck and end up spilling stuff all over the table. I think this should be a good enough uh, place to drop in today's feeding. All this uh, reclaimed and collected bedding I was sort of piling up over here can be included with the feeding too. But I would like to, you know, use a couple of these napkins I bought over here for the bedding today. So why don't we just start laying in some stuff for them. I guess it wouldn't make a whole lot of difference if I were to just lay it in here whole. If I'm tearing it into pieces, it's probably, uh, probably not a big deal either way. But I figured whatever, we'll just try to fragment it a little bit. And even though the moisture level in here, the material all feels quite fine, I do feel like I'm on the borderline, you know. So rather than just leaving this in here dry, I'm going to grab my squirt bottle over here. The squirt bottle has not only, not only water in it, but it's got a little bit of that, that mosquito dunks solution. And even though I don't see any flying insects down here within this system, I don't mind, you know, kind of treating the material with this stuff here and there as a preventative measure, just in case any wise guy, little flying insects, try to make themselves at home in here. They can try to reproduce and mate, and they will, and they'll be successful at that, but it's their offspring that are going to be stifled by the, by the BTI and be unable to develop into the next generation of mating insects. This thing doesn't have any breaches in it, no holes, unless they were to sneak in right next to the stem there, I think there might be a little hole. No, I don't think so. I mean, this thing was getting mushy. And it just seemed like, rather than just trying to salvage little bits and pieces off of it, I would just give it to the worms. But I'm going to at least give them one access point where they can go in there and, and get at this thing. I don't know, now I'm compelled to open it up. Because when I was a kid, I always got a kick out of one of these little tiny peppers beginning to grow down within the pepper that I was eating. This was always my little favorite piece here, is to eat this little tiny pepper that's developing within the parent pepper. So what else do we have here? This is some beans, I guess wax beans or whatever these are called. They're not green beans obviously because they're not green. But they are beans. They don't taste much different from your typical green bean I think. They're just a different color. And the rest of this is all strawberry. Why don't we um, start sprinkling in a little bit of this grit that I've got for them. A system that's this old has been fed 18 times, now a 19th time. It's probably received good bits of crushed eggshell that I use as the grit in my feedings. But I also don't feel like it's harmful to just keep adding it, even though I feel like the system might have ample amounts of it floating around within it. Putting it right there where the food is seems like a good place for it to be. Just in case the worms require any, it's right there. And, you know, 
this piece of uh, paper over here, this coffee filter that the coffee's rusting in. I think we can make use of that as a replacement for the feeding zone indicator that we encountered when we first came in here. We removed it as part of the top coverings, but the reason that was resting there in the middle on top was to indicate to us where we last fed. Not that it would have been so difficult to find it if we just looked around a little bit. <laughs> but now I feel like we've given them a nice, generous quantity of fresh bedding to go hand in hand with the existing bedding that's already in here. Let's um, let's also drop in these coffee grounds. Let's spread this stuff about, and I'll even sprinkle it with some of my worm chow. Just to increase the appeal. Now I, I guess we could start introducing some of this used bedding back down into the system. Instead of having it just resting out here on the surface, it does make a lot more sense to be down within the system to be consumed alongside the nitrogen fresh, nitrogen rich kitchen scraps that I put in there, all the veggies and fruits. And then to balance out that nitrogen rich food is the paper and the leaves, all of the carbon rich bedding materials that double as a, a food source for them as well, besides being their bedding. And then on top we give them the dessert, yummy strawberries. Alright, looks like a pretty nice feeding if you ask me. I really did think we might see some leftovers from the last feeding, but all we saw were just little itsy bitsy scraps of, you know, some sort of greens. I don't even know what those were at this point. But I think it's time to start backfilling. And I'm going to try to do so with any bits of paper that I can find here to put it right down there on the line of fire so they can nibble on that stuff too rather than just letting it sit near the surface where it's going to get, be, you know, it's going to get a little bit dry and not be of much use to the worms that way. I guess we can just Go ahead and cover up here, right? We didn't get a chance to examine how the outer edges of the system are. I'm just getting this funny feeling like things might be a little bit more dry out on the outer edges than we would want them to be. And that might be our excuse to come back in with the squirt bottle. You know, I, I do have the option, obviously, to replace the top coverings with plastic to try to help preserve the system's existing moisture content versus allowing it to evaporate. Another pit from a peach, I mean, from a cherry. I'm not sure if it's just one of the ones we were examining earlier. I think just the dryness we're seeing out here might be the reason there's so few worms. I do see a worm here or there, but nothing like what we saw down the middle where the feedings had been placed most recently and where the majority of the moisture in the system resides. So I guess now would be a good time to just come in here and try to supplement the moisture out here on the outer edges with my spray bottle. In the past for me, I don't know why, I guess it was always preferred in a way to try to preserve existing moisture in the system by covering with plastic versus uh, coming in with extra moisture like we're doing here now. But I guess I've grown a little bit indifferent to that so I don't really have a particular preference either way. It does feel like a more reactive way of dealing with it rather than you know maybe anticipating that that's just the way it's going to keep being from now on if we don't do something different and then maybe use that as the reason to switch top coverings to plastic like i said we've always got that option Ooh, i'm starting to run a little bit low here all right let's see how things on this side are doing oh much different look at that for whatever reason, there's a little bit more moisture, and as a result of that, we've got a good number of worms in it. Almost making me wonder if it's necessary to supplement moisture out on this edge. Might not even be necessary. Feels quite nice. I don't know. Just for the heck of it. Maybe more for the purpose of including some of this BTI solution in there. We're going to go ahead and give them some. Alrighty. Not bad. Somehow my hand just feels things that are dry. You know, they don't they don't seem to bend or 
give as easily. They seem to be more resistant to my hand as I plow through. So it feels like I could sense the more dry stuff almost immediately as I touch it. It makes me want to add more and more moisture. But I mean, you know, we just added a bunch of strawberries that are going to emit moisture as they thaw. That pepper will a little bit, I suppose. Those beans almost certainly will. Not to mention the moisture that we just added here. So I think we're going to be in good shape as far as moisture is concerned if we just continue as is. And not worry so much about trying to improve the top coverings to help preserve moisture. Maybe, you know, maybe next time we'll take that same situation into consideration to see if it makes sense to actually put a plastic covering on here versus paper only. But for now, I think we're in good shape if we simply continue as is. Sometimes I also feel like if we were to just dampen some of these pieces of paper, perhaps some of the moisture rather than just going straight into the air will also permeate down into the material right below it. So I'm going to just go ahead and dampen these couple pieces of top covering paper, one of which was just our replacement feeding zone indicator. But I think I'm at the point where I've got to reload my <laughs> squirt bottle, but that's fine. We don't need any more than that. We're in good shape here. I did uh, I did prepare with my prepared bedding here. I had it right here on standby. Took it off the shelf, took off the cover. I was ready to use some if we needed it. But I think we were pretty good with some of that recycled bedding that we collected in the beginning, all those napkins. I think, uh, I think they're going to be just fine in here for a little while longer until we come back to feed them again. Ten days seemed like a pretty good interval. We saw a little bit of scrap, a little bit of leftover from the last feeding, but certainly not much. It was certainly due for the next feeding. Let's just hope some of these castings stuck to the wall make their way back down into the bedding here. Feels like if I hold this thing at just the right angle, I can still get a little bit to come up into the nozzle and squirt out before it doesn't want to do so any longer. <laughs> Maybe I've got to reposition that, that pickup tube to be aiming forward rather than backwards because here it's cavitating. If it were aiming forward, I could keep on going. So whatever, we'll take care of that after the camera stops rolling. And I've got to take some stuff over to the sink and get myself cleaned up, make sure I don't have any hitchhikers on me. All right, enough of that. I'll take care of cleaning up and putting away. Before I go, though, let me just real quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.